Would you believe me if I said there's actually agents out there that every time they go to a listing presentation, they get the listing? Virtually 100% of the time, they get the listing every time. Is that even possible? Well, today we're gonna talk to a guest who's doing that, okay? Krista Mayshore is doing a killer job getting listings, getting virtually every listing that she goes to apply for, but you're gonna hear how she's not really applying. Like she she has the job before she ever shows up because of her pre-listing strategy. She's gonna share that with us today along with some really deep dive stuff on the marketing sales cycle so you can learn how to actually get these listing presentations to begin with. All right, guys, I'm here with Krista Mayshore. Welcome back to the Massive Agent Podcast. How are you? Good, Justin. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. I appreciate it. Absolutely, absolutely. I was telling you before we hit record, um, you were on episode 110 back in January of 2020 before the world changed forever. And uh, it's one of my one of the top five most listened to episodes of the show. So congrats on that. And ah, thank you. Of course, uh, which is great because Back then, we were talking about how you've sold over 2,000 homes. Today, we're going to be talking about social media and a sales cycle and some, some nerdy stuff that I absolutely love and that agents really need to wrap their heads around. And um, I'm excited for it. So thank you for being back. Yes, yes, I'm excited. Hey, it's easy to do a good podcast when you have a good host, you know? Well, and we're talking about this show right now, Krista, but, but thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> I met you. <laughs> I know, I know. I appreciate that. Um, yeah. Okay. So you, I see you everywhere in my newsfeed. You know, you do a great job. You not just, you have a sales team locally there in California, but you also are a coach and a mentor and a personality, if you will, within our industry for other agents. And so I see you everywhere. And I'm like, she really understands social media. She understands retargeting. She understands attention. She just gets it. Let's talk about that because it still it boggles my mind, Krista, how many agents still don't get it and they're just posting their stupid listings on their Instagram feed. You can't even see their face. You go to their profile. You have no idea what the agent looks like and they're still just doing it wrong and they're like, social media doesn't work. So let's set them straight a little, shall we? Yes, yes. Okay, so first yeah. of all- start, start that wherever you'd like. I know I just basically gave you like, here you go, talk about anything, but- Wherever that starts for you, oh, my phone is ringing. That's fantastic. Well, let's just do this. Let's just say, go. first of all, it's not their fault that they haven't been taught the right way because most agents are all still being taught to do the traditional type things that we were taught to do before when they didn't have the internet and social media and video, right? They were taught to do open houses and cold call and door knock and sphere of influence and all those things work, but, you know, Everyone gets in this business because they want more financial freedom and time just to realize they don't have any because the business consumes them, right? Right. So instead of marketing one-on-one, -on -one, think one to many. And, and so what I want agents to understand is that your job is not to be a top producer. Your job is to be a marketer, right? You need to be a marketer. If you could learn to be a marketer, you will then be a top producer because mm -hmm. the idea is to get all the attention, all the eyes on you as much as possible to make it to where you're absolutely, it's impossible for people not to think about you. You've got to be remembered, you know, all the time, not just when someone's thinking about making a decision to purchase, you need to be thought about way before that, because if they only think about you right when it's time, it's probably too late, right? right. Like, <laughs> so. Absolutely. No, th that's it. Um, so how do, how do agents do that then? I, I mean, just thinking differently, like you said, is a great start. But I think a lot of agents or most screw up in the implementation of that. Okay, like, like they're like, okay, cool. Here's what I should do. But then how they actually do it, they're just missing something. So, so how have you done it? How have you built your business? And what are you telling other agents and you know your team on how to do this the right way? Yeah. Okay. This is great. So according to the National Association of Realtors, 87% of agents will be out of business within the first five years. And as you know, like 97% of agents do 3% of the work and 3% of agents do 97% of the business, right? And the agents that are thinking about their business like an entrepreneur and like a business are the ones that are dominating. So I want to talk today, I'd love to, about how social media and video incorporates with the sales cycle. Now, let me talk to you about the sales cycle. Now, what the sales cycle is, is it's, it's truly having a true complete business. So 
the first phase of the sales cycles is marketing, then lead generation, then lead nurture, then conversion, then fulfillment and delivery, and then the five R's. How do you get more referrals, retain more clients, um, get people to relist and resell with you, and you get those through rituals and routine. So most people are so consumed, concerned with lead generation, right? Like if I, and I've done this, what is, what do you want in your real estate business? Everyone will say leads, leads, leads. And I'm like, you don't want leads, you want conversions. You want high quality leads that convert. That's really what we want, right? So in order to get high quality leads, we have to start with marketing. Marketing is attraction. If you read the book, Dean Graziasi, Millionaire Success Habits, he says that marketing is attraction. And that's what marketing is. True marketing is when somebody raises their hand and says, hey, I want to work with you. And they do that based upon your marketing efforts. When I talk marketing, I, I mean, I know this is a part of it, but I don't want you to think about your brand, you know, your, your, your sign and your cards and your colors and all that. I want you to think about what perception are you giving to your community? You know, what values do you have? Who are you attracting? You know, what do you represent? Who, when they see you and your brand, what does it represent? For example, my brand represents that if you're going after somebody who utilizes social media and digital marketing to expose someone's home to the masses at the highest level, you come to me, right? And everyone will tell you that. Krista's like the best marketer because they see me and my stuff all over the place. So when you market to somebody, and I, I'll tell you um, just one strategy that we did last year in 12 months during COVID, we had 48 seller, sellers raising their hand saying, hey, come list my house. And we do that by marketing, right? I mean, that was $740,000 worth of commission for those 48 listings. And we sold more. Just this one strategy got us 48 closed listings directly from Facebook where someone said, hey, I want a home evaluation, which then turned into a listing, right? Uh, and that we sold. So how we did that was we, first of all, we, I, we market, marketing attraction. I think, what is a problem the market is having? What, what is a difficulty the consumers are having, having right now in the market? And over the past 12 months, we've had a significant seller market, right? No inventory. So most people are like, how do I help the buyer? I'm going to, you know, move your contingencies, sell your soul, give them your children, like, like do whatever you can, you know, to get the, get the, get the listing. But I didn't want buyers. I wanted sellers. So I thought, what's a problem that sellers are having? And the problem that sellers were having was the fact that there is such limited inventory that they were afraid they were going to be homeless if they sold. Right. So I identified that problem. And then we started creating content about selling your house when in, in a limited inventory market. And it would start out with something like this. Are you a seller thinking about selling, but you're afraid to sell because you're afraid that you're going to be homeless due to limited inventory and multiple offers? Ah, oh, I totally understand that. In fact, I just sold my house this year as well, and I was worried about it too. But just last month alone, we helped 13 sellers just like you sell their home and actually find a replacement property. Hi, I'm Kristen Mayshore with Homes by Kristen EX Realty, and I have sold over 2,300 homes in my career. And we help people like you all the time, and here's exactly how. Boom, 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 right? And then give your, your call to action. Now, all of a sudden, that seller that was thinking about selling, because I'm properly getting my messaging out there, normally he would be ignoring me when I did that content, right? Because he's like, well, yeah, I want to sell, but I can't. But since I spoke to his direct problem and gave the solution to it, now all of a sudden he's listening, right? So, so that was phase one of getting sellers. We marketed them by solving a problem and putting the right content in front of them that they were interested in to make them want to continue to watch and make them say, hey, I'm interested in that. And then we followed it up with now, so that was the first phase, marketing. Well, now I've got to nurture them, right? So I've, I've marketed, that generated a lead. That, lead. that lead said, I'm watching these videos. Now that lead said, hey, I want a market analysis, right? But before they're going to say, I want a market analysis, I have to nurture those leads, okay? Nurturing is the hardest part for agents and people because we want it and we want it now, right? Because of social media and everything else. So nurturing looks like, how do I keep showing up in front of them where they are all the time and making it to where I'm unforgettable, right? So now that I've, I'm giving them seller content, now I'm going to nurture them with client testimonials. I'm going to nurture them with my marketing materials. I'm going to nurture them with community videos. I'm going to nurture them with market updates. I'm going to nurture them with just like cool stuff that I did that day. I'm going to do that via social media by paying, right? I'm paying to have eyes on me. I'm paying to play. I'm paying for pe to people to pay attention. And on the top of that, I'm doing the exact same thing in my email, right? So they're seeing me on social media. And now they're in my, they're in my, in my, um, my email as well. So they're getting marketed that way. And so now I've marketed them. 
I've generated leads. Now I'm nurturing those leads. Now the next step phase is conversion, right? I'm going to convert those leads so much easier because of the fact that I'm continuing to market them and nurture them with video content where I'm getting them to know me, right? In order for me to be liked and to be, to be seen, I've got to be known, right? In order for me to position myself as the authority and the expert, I've got to constantly be adding value, showing them that I care, serving, not selling, giving as much content to them and being top of mind all the time. So now when they're ready to take action because they've seen me so much, I call it winning before you arrive, right? I'm winning before I arrive every time I put a video in front of them. Every time they see my content, I'm just that much more positioning myself as the go-to expert that's doing something that nobody else in my area is doing, right? So that makes conversion so much easier because I've already like been doing it the whole time beforehand. Um, so now once we've done all those things, now it's like, okay, how do I make sure I give them the best fulfillment and delivery process? How do I make sure that I give them everything I said and then some? And we do that by having the right systems in place, right? Like I know... Um, EXP has KV Core. I have my own method called the Mayshore method, where it just it's like landing pages, funnels, workflows, transaction management, lead pages, um, you name it. And we literally just give them like we're just everything just seems so automated. So they're getting personal emails, personal text messages. Um, we have you know sellers guides, buyers guides, marketing plans. I can just you know a list and list of di different tools that we give to sellers to help make the process easier. Uh, a book that they can read. I mean, a full-fledged book, right? Like a whole, anything you can imagine about the selling process we have. So we hand them, we walk them through step by step so that we have the best fulfillment and delivery process. Because you don't want to spend all this time, you know, marketing and generating leads and nurturing leads just so that when you get them, they don't have the best experience with you. You want them to have the best experience. And then once they're done, with that experience, you want to make it to where you're still unforgettable. They know how to refer you. You're showing up all the time. You're constantly nurturing them. You're getting more referrals from them. You're top of mind from them. When they think about listing again, it's impossible for them not to want to list with you because you're you're constantly in their feed, right? And that's what I call refer, retain, resell. And you get that by having rituals and routines. Again, being consistent. Um, being ritualistic about getting your content out there, being ritualistic about making sure it's properly distributed so it's actually seen. That's kind of how the whole sales cycle is. And if you think about social media and video, it can be incorporated into every single aspect of the sales cycle. I mean, video with marketing, 110%, right? Video with lead generation, 110%. Video and social media with lead nurture, absolutely 100%. With conversion, video and social media, 110%. It's it's incorporated in every single phase of the sales cycle to make your, your business just flow like a steam engine. I feel like I talked way too long there. You didn't get to say anything, Dustin, so I'm sorry, but. <laughs> I didn't want to interrupt. That was perfect. And I was taking notes because it's when you, when you paint the picture that you just did, it, it's like, okay, that system, when you get all the parts working together, it, it's not one plus one plus one equals three. It's one plus one plus one equals 10. Like it, it just compounds the effectiveness over time. And from my point of view, and correct me if, if, um, if I'm wrong or if you disagree, I think the most important part there is beginning the nurture. Um, now, obviously you've got to get a lead. You know, if there's no one to talk to, the rest is bullshit. But so many agents, most of the agents that join my program and that I coach and train, they just get leads. And if they don't answer the first couple of times or they don't respond to a text the first few tries, they just move on. They don't have any systems in place to continue the follow-up. They have no systems in place for nurturing. And they believe that nurture means a text or an email or a phone call, that that's the only thing that there is out there. And I know because that's how I thought before I really started to learn about retargeting, also known as nurturing. So do you believe that the nurturing is really like the magic that makes it all work? Or is there a different part that you know, what do you think about that? Or is it all kind of equally important? I think they're all very important, but I think what you're saying is a dead spot on, right? Is that the nurturing is the hardest part. It takes the longest and, and that's what agents are the weakest at. And so that's why this works so well is because when you're putting this content out there, I call it views while you snooze. My content is working for me while I'm sleeping, while I'm on vacation, people will binge me, right? And so it's to the point where like, I mean, think about it. 
you know, I've sold over a hundred years, like 20 years straight, except for last year, we did 90 because I'm only working five hours a week on my business. I mean, we did over a million dollars in real estate, not with a huge team. It's my brother, right? Who acts as me, uh, a transaction coordinator and, and a, a marketing person. That's it. No other, no other agents, right? 90 deals. And that's usually, that's how it's been for me before I was coaching. It was always me and assistant at TC. Um, and we did 150, 160, 170 homes from this system. It's all about, you know, being seen as the community market leader, getting the content out there, making sure I'm constantly getting, I mean, every video that we produce gets 400, 500, 700 hours of watch time, 150, 170,000 people reached, right? 2,000, 6,000 comments, likes, and shares. Now imagine me going on a listing appointment and being like, hey, Mr. Mrs. Seller, the reason why you utilize me is because I use a highly disruptive digital marketing strategy, which no other agents are using. They might say they're posting on Facebook or using social media, but if you look here, here's the difference of doing it right and doing it wrong. And I'll show like my competitors, they've got like five views, a hundred views, and I've got like 18,000, right? In one week. And they're, and I'm like, and then look at this, look at these five last properties they listed and I'll show, you know, 700 hours, 500 hours, 138,000 views, you know, 6,000 clicks. And they're just like, holy moly. And then I remind them, well, I don't do any of this. A video does. And before I go on a listing appointment, I, I send a 17 minute long video that talks all about social media and the questions you should ask and what you should be looking for and the kind of results that using social media will do for you. And I remind them that according to the National Association of Realtors, 67% of buyers will walk through a home they see online. So imagine like me showing them, hey, here's Zillow. Zillow got, you know, 1,100 hits on this one. And here's my marketing. We got 27,000 hits, right? And it's like when I can show them that and just show them pages of, of this kind of marketing from homes that are exactly like theirs. And then I remind them that buyers typically are looking you know, to take action three to six months prior. So I'll be marketing their listing that's similar to the listings I had three to six months prior to buyers who were interacting three to six months prior, plus people locally and out of there that are doing it now. It's just a whole different conversation that I'm having than what my competitors are. So, you know, it it it, it helps us get a higher price commission, a higher price listing. Um, and it's just like the commission question doesn't really come up because we're not a commodity. We're doing things that just people aren't doing, right? And, and agents aren't even talking about that. So when I, you know, have competition, I'm talking about all, like they see my 17 minute long video before I even get there. They're like, holy crap. Like, yes. Like, where do we sign? Like, you're our girl. You know what I mean? There's two ways that, two directions I want to take this. So first off, that video that you send ahead of time sounds absolutely genius. Um, but I, there's so many agents that I talk to that, they they believe that all their social media knowledge and expertise is for them. Like it's it's just what an agent does behind the scenes, and they never share it with sellers. They don't share it with the public. They don't educate because they're like, well, that's just what we do behind the scenes to promote a listing. But what you do is the opposite. You're educating the sellers on how this works, right? Can you talk about that 17 minute video? Yeah. So basically, it it shows them all the things that we do and what traditional type agents are doing and why the way, the way we're doing it is so much more effective, right? Like we'll say things like, hey, you know, at, we from our extensive research, um, we found that less than 1% of agents are, are utilizing social media correctly. They're doing things like posting on their business page and posting on their personal page. However, based upon the algorithm, no one is seeing it. We actually show, teach people how to, and we do, how to actually market it so that not just your friends and family and your dog is seeing it, but your like the whole entire community is seeing it. People both locally and out of the area, right? And we'll sh we show them. So we'll show them how we utilize geographic targeting, how we target people in the area and out of there, how we retarget. And I mean, it's like, it's all about digital marketing. We talk about how we don't do open houses and why they're not effective and how we utilize virtual online open houses instead. And it's all about stats and data. Um, and, and it makes them rethink things, right? So if somebody says they're utilizing social media, make sure they're showing you results like these. And we'll show them like the video shows like, here's, you know, five different properties that we had with like 500 videos, 500 hours of watch time, 700 hours of watch time. And so we're, and we're showing them like, Hey, see right here where it says 197,000 people. That's how many people saw this ad. Right. And so the whole thing is like pointing and arrows and just like explaining um, how, you know, open houses are great, but they're really for looky loos and your neighbors if real serious people have buyers that are qualified and we find you those qualified buyers and bring them there so you don't have to do the things that were done, you know, 20 years ago because we didn't have the internet and, and social media. So it's 
it's basically, and I don't want this to sound wrong, but it's discrediting what the traditional agent says they're doing. It's showing why all those things just aren't effective anymore. They really don't work. And they're only being done because they haven't trained themselves in these type of digital marketing strategies. Well, it's that works because you're, you're educating and training the seller at the same time that not all social media efforts are created equal. Because if that was the case, I mean, any agent could show up and say, we use social media and we'll put your property on social. Well, that could be posting your stupid listing flyer, literally as the, the PDF flyer, as an Instagram post. And you get two views and one of them was your mother-in-law out of courtesy. Yeah. And, you know, that's using social media. That's promoting the, the listing, but that's not the same as what you do. It's you're, you're not, you're getting, you know, 20, 25,000 views on a listing video and open houses and all this stuff. So what has educating the seller done for you in far, as far as like your conversion on, on listings? I, I imagine it's gone through the roof, right? Yeah, it's, uh, we rarely lose on a listing. And I mean, when mm. I say rarely, it's like, especially when I was doing it, I mean, I, my team was always like, I've never seen somebody convert like you do. And I'm like, I already converted before I even got there. Like the, all the yep. conversion happened before, like I'm, I'm winning before I arrive. Everything I do, I'm on a job interview. So let me give you an example of, of what I do before I go on a listing appointment. So, and again, now it's not me, but I drop off a copy of, um, so first of all, when they request a CMA, okay, I drop the CMA off at the house. I knock on the door. If they don't answer, then I do a video message telling them to check their front porch. There's a, there's a CMA on there and also check their email because I'm going to go over the email. So we've already gone over, over the CMA on an email on a Loom or Zoom and we actually review the CMA, okay? I drop off a book called The Savvy Seller. Um, I have one title that says, what to expect when selling your East County home, what to expect when selling your home, and what to expect when selling your Deer Ridge or Shadow Lakes home. So depending if they're in my farm or in East County, they'll get one of those two books. If they're not in my farm or in East County, they'll get the, just the generic book, right? Which is not very many that are actually not in those areas. And then I drop off a marketing plan. So they get, and this is the same process before a listing, okay? The only difference is if I'm trying to get people to raise their hand and say, hey, can I have a home evaluation? I run the, I run seller ads, then I send them to a seller open house funnel, a seller, I'm sorry, a seller funnel, or a what's my home worth funnel. Or I send them to a what's my home worth funnel where they, they raise their hand and say, yes, I want a CMA. Then I send them to a seller seminar funnel that has like 27 videos on it, talks all about the selling process, okay? When they say, yes, I'd like a market analysis, then this is the process that I do. This is the same process with the exception of dropping off the CMA that I do before I go on a listing presentation, okay? If somebody wants a CMA, they get the CMA. If somebody wants, if it's a listing appointment, I do not drop the CMA off. But for both, I drop off the book, a seller's guide, a marketing plan. And then for the list for the CMA, I do a review of the, of the CMA. I do not do a review of the CMA via video prior to going on to the listing appointment. I just talk about that when I'm there. Then I that information gets zapped into my CRM. So they're now getting a digital copy of the book, a digital copy of the marketing plan, a digital copy of um, the seller's guide. And I send them the 17 minute listing presentation video for people who request a CMA and before I go on the listing appointment, okay? Then I follow that up with a thank you card and then I future market to people that want a CMA, okay? Also the people that want a CMA, they also get a testimonial videos from me, they get marketing videos so they can see how I market. And then they start getting community videos, market updates, you know, just information about us. And, and the same happens with the listing. But, but the people that want a listing appointment, okay, they get all that as well. Then they get a card and a phone call uh, reminding them, a personal phone call from my team, reminding them of the appointment and then a text message reminder the next day. So it's like 11 step process that we're doing before we go on a listing presentation and like a 15 step process that we do when somebody requests a CMA to where it's like, I get there and they're all, oh my God, no one did any of this stuff. And I say, you're right. And that's what you're gonna expect from me, a five-star review, five-star service from the second that you list with me. And just understand if I'm doing all of this work, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, prior to actually gaining your business, imagine what it's gonna be like once I gain your business. You haven't even paid me yet. So like I'm setting the stage for what they can expect because remember, 
anything and everything that you do is a representation of how you do business and what they can expect from you. So I'm setting the precedence of, I want a five-star review. Number one, I'm going to be requesting one. You're going to give me one. And number two, I'm over delivering before you even, before you even get there and understand that that video, the videos that brought him into my funnel to begin with were helping me win before I arrived. It was developing a relationship with them. It was positioning me as the expert. It was showing that I'm different. It's showing my value, value and knowledge. Right. And then the listing presentation video, my God, like that's just, it, you're a goner. Like once you watch that, it's just like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I'm hiring you. Right. Right. And people will ask me, Christy, can I see the video? And I'm like, no, you can't because you can't, you have to be trained and taught how to do all the things that are in the video, or you can't give them the video. Right. It's like, it's like, a, you have to learn how to do all those things to be able to even speak to it. So um, it, it's pretty cool. <laughs> it is. And it's, it's a lot but that's what works. I mean, they're, they're being overwhelmed with your expertise, overwhelmed yes. with your professionalism, your credibility, your, uh, they're like, okay, this is, this is the one like Chris is the pro obviously, because everyone else is just showing up with a little printed CMA or they'll email the CMA. Yes. Yeah. Is this, is your, is this podcast, is it just, just the words or, um, can you, are they seeing the video too? On YouTube? Yeah. We'll have the video on YouTube. If you want, I can show like, and you you can hear it too, but I can like, I can do a three minute, like a two and a half minute example of the video. Would that help? Absolutely. Okay. So if you could let me share my screen, I'll, I'll do that. Should be good. Okay. Here we go. So guys, if you are if you want to see this, just go over to YouTube and watch it, but you should be subscribed already. So yes, subscribe. Seriously. Okay. Your home deserves it and your home deserves maximum exposure. We need and that's to your brother mm-hmm. to the thousands, not just the few. We do this by thinking outside of the box and by using a highly comprehensive digital marketing strategy that we have yet to see any other agents utilize in our area. We focus on innovation, technology, video, and social media. And here's the kicker and where most agents fail. We use them the right way. Now, what do I mean by the right way? Well, according to the National Association of Realtors, only 16% of agents are using social media. But from my extensive research, we found that less than 1% across the nation are actually using it correctly. Many agents are using the buzz term if they use social media and technology. However, agents who have not been trained in this comprehensive digital marketing strategy are just doing things like posting on their personal page or posting on their business page. But that just is not enough. You see, Facebook is a business and they make their money from people advertising on Facebook. So to properly expose your property, you have to run ad campaigns. This ensures that massive amounts of people actually see your home. Here are just a few examples of what I mean by this. If you look at the number right here, you'll see where it says reach. Well, that's the number of people that are actually seeing this advertisement for this home. Can you imagine the power of having over 132,000 people actually seeing your home online and here's another example showing 76,000 views that's a lot isn't it we create amazing landing pages of our homes on social media and we use video when doing so according to orion 21 landing pages with video have up to 800 percent more conversions than the same landing page without a video Here's another crazy statistic I think you should hear about. According to the National Association of Realtors, 67% of buyers are going to walk through a home that they see online. So you can only imagine how important it is that I expose your home to as many prospective buyers online as I can. Because if 67% of people that see your home are likely to walk through it, then it's my fiduciary obligation to make sure that I expose your home to the masses. Also, we can target your specific home to people both local and out of the area. This is called geographic detailed targeting. We do this not only on Facebook, but also on various other social media platforms. Here's another example of just a few properties that we advertised, and you can see the amount of hours that people were watching the videos. That's so much more powerful than just doing an open house, which typically only attracts looky-loo buyers and of course your neighbors, right? So that's an example of like, so that's three minutes of the 17 minute video that we gave, and the whole thing is just all about that, like showing how we do, you know, virtual open houses and use 3D technology and how we take that and actually position it to where it's actually being seen because it's great to do all those things, but if nobody sees it, and that's what most agents don't understand is that the reason why their video isn't working or the social media is not working is they're not 
they're not investing in, in themselves and investing in learning how to do it right to actually get it exposed. If you can create video content every single week, two to three videos, and you run an ad behind it and you properly distribute it, you, I mean, imagine the power of getting three, four, five, six, seven hundred 700 hours every week of a video being seen. It's just a matter of time before you start to, and perception is reality, right? This will work for a brand new agent who's never sold a house before. In fact, we had, a, we had an agent, her name was Sue Lafave. She got voted best realtor in her, and like really truly voted best realtor. And she was not, you know, pimping for the business because she hadn't sold a house yet <laughs> before selling a house. And she's like, oh my God, I won best realtor. And she just actually messaged me and she's like, I just had a six figure quarter. Like in four months, I made six figures, Krista. And the reason being is because she was doing all the things we taught her, creating her community videos, creating, you know, videos about like what's happening in the area, market updates, you know, seller tips, buyer tips, interviewing local businesses, like doing the strategy that we have. And so people perceive her as doing business. Now she's top of mind. They're getting to know her, right? They're, they're thinking that she's just doing all this business real estate because she's talking about it all the time. And now she is that agent, right? That she, that she was perceived to be. Um, most people, when they're, when they're posting, no one's seeing it. Like their mom is seeing it, their friends. That's how these platforms work. If you're interacting, you're seeing it unless you're paying an advertising budget. And so many agents, you know, uh, they just, Dustin, they don't think about their business like this. They don't think about their business and how important marketing is and how if they market themselves properly and invest in getting that exposure for themselves and their clients. So when I'm doing these vi property videos that are getting all this watch time, I'm also marketing myself. I'm like showing the world, you know, it's great for my clients. I'm doing my fiduciary obligation, but I'm also marketing me. And so you got to think about that. You know, you're it's just, and that's why it works so well. And that's, and it's hard, right? Like doing video is difficult. It, it takes, you got to get out of your head. I always tell people progress, not perfection, be perfectly imperfect and just take action and just do and be consistent. And before you know it, it'll be like, what the heck happened? You know, but most agents give up before they see the results and uh, they're not willing to invest in themselves, which is just so crazy to me because we, I mean, God, I made like just under two million, like 1.8 million, I think was the best year I ever had in real estate. I mean, how many doctors or attorneys or lawyers do you know that make $1.8 million a year? Like they don't. No. And their, their quality of life is awful. They're always yeah. at the hospital. And they got to, they take, they got to go to school for 13 years and they got to, you know, right. spend, you know, million dollars getting it to make, you know, three or 400,000 realtors can make so much more than that, but they don't invest in the skill and strategy to get them there. So it's yeah. just crazy to me. And they don't see themselves as a business. Yeah. Like, I didn't. It took me four or five years before I was like, huh. Like it, I had a mindset shift eventually, but honest, honest to God, Krista, had I seen this and just heard you run through the sales cycle and then talk about your pre-listing strategy and everything, had I heard that in the beginning of my career, I, I don't, my life would be completely different. I, because my the first half of my career was nothing but struggle because I just didn't have, like, I didn't know what I didn't know. And I didn't have any mentors that knew what the hell they were doing either, as far as really scaling a profitable, successful real estate business. Mm -hmm. And most agents, most agents that I talk to that are part of my coaching group and on my team, they, they want to do these things. They just don't know where to start. But what I love about what you just did, Krista, you just took away their excuse of, I don't know what to do. You literally just told them what the hell to do every single thing. Now, the only variable is, are they going to do it? And it, yes, it's hard. It's hard. Being successful is hard, but you know, what's harder struggling, you know, being broke, not being able to pay your bills. That's hard. That's hard. Just, it's a different hard. So I appreciate you laying that out in such detail and it's a lot of work, but um, I, I, let me get this from you. I imagine that you personally were not sitting there in your office at 1.30 in the morning typing all this stuff out, right? I assume you had some help to implement it, yes? So typing video out? And the whole system, the whole pre-listing, you know, the, the 11 steps or the 15 steps. So that, that was all me, truth be told. Yeah, that's 100% okay. me. Like I create all my videos, all the content, um, but you do it once and then it's done, right? Because I used to yes. do this. So I did this strategy before I coached it. Now I coached it, but that's why it was so hard to beat me because the strategy I just went over, I've been doing for years, right. those types of things, right? So it's like, when I'd show up on a listing, I'd, I'd see other top producers like, well, you, you know, you do that, like there's are doing fair people. And I'd be like, hey, 
like I, I mean, God, I rarely would lose it. it like I remember losing one time. They're like, Chris, you just have too much energy for me. And my grandma is like 97 and she, she probably have a heart attack, you know, if we hire you. But I mean, I, my, my close ratio was like over 99%. Like it's just because you can't refute like I'm winning before I arrive every single time I do a video, I drop off the CMA, I review it, I send a text message, I drop off the book, I drop off the market. It's just, I'm just like, I'm up in my chances of getting it, right? And by the time I send that listing presentation video, like it's all over. If I just did that, but when I, when I deliver my book and the book was written by me and a New York Times bestselling author, it's not one of those cheesy generic books. It's all about digital marketing, why you do things with examples. It's like, it's written in a way to like, just crush it. And I'll tell you what, people watch that video. We can track it. They, they always watch it and they read that book because it's their most valued asset. And they can tell when they interview with my team that we take it just as serious as them, right? Because we've done all these things and it's, it's a huge deal and we treat it as such. And, uh, you know, I will just say like, if I have what I have, if I have what I teach when I got into business, I can only imagine, you know, I mean, it, it would have been right. crazy. I've had to learn and I've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars. I don't hire real estate coaches. I hire digital marketing coaches and sales copy coaches and, you know, these different type of coaches that, and I've taken all this information and put it into a business in a box for agents, you know, um, and it just, it's catapults their career. I mean, it catapults people's career, but it, it's, it's an investment of time and, and energy and money, obviously. Um, but it's like you said, it's either going to be hard, hard now or and easy later or easy now and hard later. You don't meet many agents. Like I, I do these trainings and I'll say, how many of you would say that you are hard workers and everybody raises their hand. And then I'll say, how many of you are wealthy? And like maybe one hand out of a hundred or 200 will go up, right? Because hard work does not always equate to wealthiness. And so we need to learn to work smart, not hard, right? It's hard in the beginning. It's smart later when you put all the systems and processes in place so that you can actually have your life back. So my goal is to help. In fact, I'll read it to you. So I'll just start from here. I'm a leader. I positively affect every life that I touch. I make a difference in the world. I uplift and upbuild those around me. I help others achieve more in life and have more financial freedom and time. I am building community market leaders across the country who make an impact on their communities and who are go-givers. Like, this is what it's all about. But, you know, it, it's, it's, and you're right. Most people, you'll tell them what to do. You can Google anything. You can Google everything that I just said. But actually sticking to it is where the coaching and the accountability and support comes in. Because when you, we want to stop because we don't see the results. But when you see other people succeeding, it's like they're breaking the four minute mile in front of you every single day. It gives you more reason to want to keep going. And so, so many people are like just three feet from gold and they give up right before it's about to go crazy, you know, because they don't have somebody saying, you keep going, you've got this, you can do it, you can do it. And so that's, I think, why coaching is so important. That's what I found anyways. It speeds up the, the well, it eliminates the learning curve. You can just, like you find someone who has what you want. And by the way, don't just look at the results on paper, look at their life, look at their lifestyle. You don't want somebody that has no time, they're family hates them, but they sell 200 homes a year. Yeah. Not really someone to look up to. You can, there's plenty of people out there that have both or that have all of it. So pick the right mentor or coach and just hire them. And boom, they just feel like here, do these things. And instead of you figuring it out over five years, you implement it in 60 days or five months. Yes. So, uh, so true. It's funny to me when people are like, well, a, a coach or a mentor or a, a, taking a course, it, it's so expensive. I'm like, if you, it's, it's literally the most expensive thing you do to not. Yeah. I know because for years, I was too cheap to take a course or hire a coach. I would just do YouTube University. I would just <laughs> Google shit and watch YouTube videos and then trial and error, specifically with Facebook ads. And had I just had someone to show me the ropes in like 30 days, and let's say I paid him a thousand bucks or 2000, whatever, I would have made so much more money by selling so many more homes in a short, shorter period of time that that was one of the most expensive mistakes I made thinking that I was saving money. Yeah. It's crazy too. Like if you, if you want to go to Harvard or whatever, you're paying between 55 and $70,000 a year to go to Harvard, Stanford, Cornell, all those, those things. And the average graduate makes around $60,000 when they graduate from that, from the university. After 12 years of experience of working in their profession, they make around $85,000 a year. The average person that graduates from Harvard, Cornell, all those things. Wow. You can make that, I made that in a day. Like you right. can make that in, in real estate if you just, so it's like, why don't people invest? And 
Um, I, it, just, it boggles me. I mean, I, I was in a foster home and I had to pay for my own college and I, I got a loan. I got a loan, put it on a credit card. And it was the best thing I ever did because it got me on a, like to realize how important education was and in investing in myself. And so I just wrote a check for 50 grand, you know, a week and a half ago to join my inner circle again. I've, it's, I've been it now my fourth year in a row. Um, and I've done well over that in the past six months on other coaching programs. And that's why, you know, I have all my words back there because I, I invested myself to learn to get where I'm at. So it, it helps. It It's everything. And I, I just, I'm having flashbacks really to, to the mindset that I had when I was struggling. And I'm like, I, why would I pay a coach when I could just Google it? When I could just watch YouTube, I didn't have anyone in my life who was where I wanted to be. That's like, no, 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 you have it backwards. You think that you can't afford to, to hire the coach or take the course. You literally can't afford not to. So borrow the money, put it on credit, uh, go sell some stuff and, you know, do it. And I didn't have anyone to do that. And so I just did what I thought made sense because it's logical, right? It's like, if I don't have money to spend, then I can't go spend $2,000 on that course. So that's logical, but it's also incorrect. Yeah. And I just didn't have anyone, but had I hired the coach, that would have been the person that's been like, no, 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 your thinking's backwards. You're wrong. And off to the races. I know that now, because over the last six to nine months, I've, I've hired some coaches. I've I've taken some trainings that, you know, that 10, 20, 30 K and th there's something also about writing the big check. Oh that, yeah. You pay attention. Does, absolutely. You pay, you pay attention. attention to what you pay for. You do, you do. And, yeah. and if it was free, it's like, eh, it's easy to blow off. It's easy to not, not uh, make it top priority. Yeah. So man, it, it's just an interesting conversation. It really is. And, and so I'm glad that there's people like you out there that can spread this message and there's podcasts that get it in the, in the hands of, or in the ears of other agents who are where we were because they need to know this stuff. And if they don't have a, someone in their office or in their life, they're just going to keep doing the same shit and getting the same results. And that's, that's, it doesn't have to be that way. Yeah. We should tell people listening to make sure you go back and listen to the other podcast I was on, on his, what, what, what number was it? Do you remember? Episode 120. Uh, oh. No, sorry. Sorry. Episode 110 from January 20. 2020. It's called how one agent sold over 2000 homes by being different. Oh, I like that. That's cool. We'll link it up in the, in the show notes. So wherever you're listening, or if you're watching on YouTube, just go to the show notes and we'll have a link to the first episode. Cause that one was really, really good as well. Thanks for having me on here, Dustin. It was great. I love your energy. Thank you. No, this is fun. Krista, you are awesome. It's no surprise that you're taking the industry by storm and you're in my newsfeed every freaking time I open Facebook. So, <laughs> so congratulations. You're doing it right. Um, I just appreciate you laying it all out there and giving agents the blueprint. I just implore them to take action. If you, if you need yes. help, what I was getting at earlier when I was saying probably wasn't you sitting there hammering it all out. Well, if you, if you don't want to do that, then hire an assistant, like hire a, a virtual assistant, somebody that can help do some of the, the tasks that you personally don't need to do. You personally need to record the videos. You personally yeah. need to direct them on what to do, but they can compile it and they can post it for you and put it together in Kajabi or ClickFunnels or whatever, but you, you've got to do it. And, and the blueprint's there. You shared it with us. So thank you so much, Krista. That was awesome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Krista, um, I will talk to you soon. Maybe I'll see you oh, in Cabo. Wait. Yeah, but don't forget. Remember, you were going to tell me where they could find more about me. Of course. And I also forgot the rapid fire questions because I, I just got too excited. So yes. let, let's do the rapid fire. And at the end, we'll let everyone know where they can find you. And, and you'll put that you. in the show notes too, right? Always. Okay, great. Yep. We'll link to your social media, uh, social media. I want to call them bios, profiles. Yeah, because I have website. an awesome, a two day event they can go to. And it, like, literally I break this stuff down in awesome. massive detail. So it'll be good for them. Awesome. We'll absolutely do a direct link to that. Okay. Let me pull up my notes. Seriously, I got too excited and I completely forgot my <laughs> own show's format. Um, fantastic. Okay, rapid fire, pick one or the other. You can elaborate if you want to, you don't have to. And then, um, yeah, Facebook or Instagram? Facebook. Um, Facebook or LinkedIn? Uh, Facebook. <laughs> okay. Books or podcasts? Oh gosh, uh, books, audiobooks. Audiobooks, okay. Audiobooks. Well, that was my next question was podcast or audiobook? Audiobook. Okay. iPhone or Android? iPhone. Um, burgers or pizza? 
Oh gosh, pizza. New York or LA? LA. NFL or NBA? Uh, NFL. Baseball or football? Uh, football. Mountains or beach? Beach. Podcasts or vlogs? Uh, ooh, vlog. Uh, YouTube or Facebook Live? Uh, YouTube. Rich dad, poor dad, or millionaire real estate agent? Rich dad, poor dad. Uber or Lyft? Uber. Gary V or Grant Cardone? Uh, Gary V. What's the most impactful book you've ever read or listened to? Uh, Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill. Mm, nice. And where can, where can guests or listeners find you? Where, um, give us your social media handles. And like I said, we'll link them up in the, in the show notes and description. Yeah, so you go to kristamayshore.com forward slash the number two days live. That's kristamayshore.com forward slash the number two days live. And it's just kristamayshore. So you'll find me on YouTube and Facebook and uh, all that good stuff. And Instagram. Awesome. Krista, you're the best. Thank you so much. Justin, I appreciate you for having me, everyone. Make sure you implement. Knowledge is not power. Implementation is you got to take action. Yes. Ooh, that's gold right there. Way to end it, Krista. <laughs> Bye, everybody.